Jackson. I don't remember being on a, you know, uh, learning how to cycle or anything like that, but I do remember um, an old deaf man who was like my granddad, was actually my mum's cousin, telling me that he cycled every day and he never got a puncture. And I really need to be much more careful. So for years I thought, I had this imagine, you know, notion that his tires had cement in them, that was something really magical that he never ever got a puncture. So obviously I was getting punctures left, right and centre. I'm true blue dub, but uh, actually uh, my parents are deaf and they're sign language users. So uh, I suppose my upbringing was a little bit different. Uh, so I would have been brought up in a sign language using house. Uh, which means that uh, we signed to each other, we used a visual and manual language uh, to communicate. But also my, I mean that, that comes with its own very special culture uh, and my parents would have been very very involved and still are very involved in the deaf community. So uh, yeah it was a very different perspective on life I suppose. Don't lose our lairs there, everyone. Beeping at you and giving you the finger and... I think it uh, gave me a, a super sharp visual sensibility uh, because the visuals are like a grammatical mode of communicating and it also gave me a real understanding of uh, oppressed minorities and a kind of a struggle for recognition is was uh, very under-recognised, it was banned. I remember in public my parents telling me not to sign to them, for example, uh, because it wasn't allowed kind of thing. Uh, but of course, for, for my parents to understand me, I had to sign, you know, that's what we did in the, very much in the privacy of the family home. The oldest girl child of a couple who are deaf is the kind of designated interpreter in the house. So I would have done a lot of phone calls. I was the link person between my grandmother uh, and my uh, aunts and uncles, like hearing aunts and uncles, you know, or outside forces like bank managers or even down to milkmen. They're all going to mass. When I was a teenager, I wasn't a rebellious teenager at all. Uh, I was actually super protective of them. But at the same time, I got away with an awful lot. You know, sneaking out the 
your bedroom window and then just calling for your sister to open the front door for you. You know, as a teenager, that was really great. Uh, and I, I don't know, but within that kind of freedom, I think that I didn't, and, and none of my siblings, we, we didn't go off the rails. I started out uh, in art college in uh, studying painting and really through a very organ organic process uh, realized that I wanted to involve my body more um, and started dreaming of these kind of sign language influenced things. I didn't even know they were called performances at the time. and. Uh, broke away from painting as a product and was looking at it much more as a process. So the, pro the act of painting, I became much more interested in. And then of course, with more kind of uh, investigation, uh, realized that there was a whole genre of, or a form uh, called performance art. And it was like, it was almost like, yeah, that's what I should be doing. That's for me. So I suppose often, if I'd have a very potent image that I can't get out of my mind, and I might have, a, 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 what, whatever way it occurred, a confluence of influences from the day, or you know, just a mad off the wall dream, I usually bring them into the studio and I let them kind of uh, sit there for a while until they won't stop bothering me. <laughs> and then I know that it's an image I have to do. I have to get rid of almost and uh, take it outside of my imagination and, and try it. And usually I try it with my own body. I, you know, actions or gestures and uh, then, then build up a whole performance. I would have made a piece a couple of years ago called Yellow, where um, you're wet for about four hours. And it's pretty cold, you know, it's nothing major. It's not like old school 70s performance art practice where they shot themselves or they whipped themselves or cut themselves. It's not that kind of grand masochistic statement, but it's still particularly taxing on the body. And uh, you just, keep going, that's it. For me personally, my particular practice is completely dependent on bridging that gap of endurance with the collusion of the audience. Because uh, if there was no audience there, I wouldn't be sitting in a dress full of bubbles and wet and cold for four hours. I'd get up and dry myself off, cycling to a standstill. I'm convinced that actually the audience that attend live performances uh, are performing themselves. So they're not only an integral part of the performance for me as the, as the artist, as the performer, but actually they change things. Uh, Joseph Boyce, a German performance artist, famously said, every man artist and certainly in the sphere of live performance that's that is I would contend the case yeah he was a performance artist he was a lot of things he made sculptures he made performances but uh, I think so, some of his performances are uh, iconic significantly important works and uh, so I paid homage to him, I suppose, in a work I made up here along the, um, along the bulwark.
Wow! So here she is, my little uh, beach seat. And in very simple terms, I just sat in there with all these pinky kind of brown, un uncooked potatoes. That performance was hilarious because uh, I accidentally told my dad, and I don't normally tell him about these things because he'd because he doesn't like them. Uh, and uh, because there was no nudity involved, he, I said it was okay for him to come along. And uh, he was here for the full, full six hours and almost hysterical. He kept, when there was no audience around, he kept going, please stop. That's enough now, that's a signing at me. Yeah, she's right up the top there, saying hello to the rest of the world from the island nation that we are. I've played around with this, uh, the image of Madonna quite a bit in my work. It's a kind of a running thread. And I, so I just love all these placements that we see of her everywhere. And, you know, especially Ireland. Uh, but this whole notion of a female deity that's at once non-sexual but also has been imaged very sexually. <laughs> 